G. Stanley Hall was born in Ashford, Massachusetts on February 1, 1844. He was a son of Jonas and Rebecca Hill. Jonas was a town's legislator member, while Rebecca was a local school teacher. Both parents were vocal of passing their experience in their respective fields and make them understand the usefulness of teaching. It was through these methods of the parents' ways that he aspired to leave a mark on the world. He began his path shortly after graduating college and created the biggest step out of his life by 1867. Among the many achievements he holds are uh, being the first to have a PhD in psychology. This would create his biggest change toward creating the psychology we have today. Having such a unique, unique degree led him to a job in Germany to apply his work onto education. As a professor in his area of psychology, by 1889, he was able to create the biggest contributions to the field. After months of work, he was able to construct the theorem in the initial form of genetic psychology. This theorem was essentially the psychology and its effects on a person through the time and would shape his career and education forever. G. Stanley Hall graduated from Harvard and was the first one to get a PhD degree. He gave special lectures on education in Harvard. Hall has supervised 30 out of 54 PhD degrees that had been awarded in the United States in 1898. He is known as the President of American Psychology Association in 1892. Contribution to Psychology he was heavily influenced by Ernest Hickson, by his theory of the stages of development of organism evolutionary ascensors, a theory that is today rejected by evolutionary scientists. Hall devoted many hours of studies to understand the adolescence, development, and especially in, a, in aggression. Two different aggressions, physical aggression which he said that was more for males and for females was the relational aggression. He also developed and growth in early psychology in his great and he was and it was his greatest contribution. His primary interest was the evolutionary psychology and child development. He he did experiments. He traveled to Germany and found the importance of the questionnaires. When he came back to the United States with his students, they performed over 190 questionnaires crucial to discoveries he made about child development. G. Stanley Hall's contribution on education can be noted through his theory that growing children would recapitulate evolutionary stages of development. He decided that there were three stages. The first stage being until ages six or seven, children learn through physical senses and children have no reasoning developed yet. The second stage stated that from ages 8 to 11 or 12, the brain is fully developed and that formal teaching must begin in schools. Children at these ages are rude and mean since they cannot deal with morality and complex reasoning. The third stage stated that from ages 13 to 24 to 25, adolescents are sexual beings. With that being said, they cannot be set in co-educational environments since they will be distracted by the opposite sex. Without having the opposite sex there, the students will be able to focus better in the classroom. J. Stanley Hall's stages influenced John Piaget's ideology of educational development. Aside from that, J. Stanley Hall did teach at John Hopkins University in 1882. Hall had an emphasis on teaching traditional subjects, for example, Latin mathematics, science, and history and he wanted them, those subjects, to be in high schools. He also proposed more education instead of preparing students for college. His book, Adolescence, Its Psychology, Its Relation to Physiology, Anthropology, Sex, Crime, and Religion, written in 1904, stated that adolescents are different beings from children and adults. His book helped promote an legitimate of high schools and middle schools. Hall also brought academic and public attention to the unique characteristics adolescents had. His book also created a framework for research of adolescents in a variety of fields and different perspectives. 
many more research on adolescence and education was conducted through his influential book. His second book, Aspects of Children, Life, and Education, written in 1907, focused on how children's education is related to psychology and physiology. This book emphasized that each stage must be appropriate for learning and activities. He also stated that themes of curriculum should be based on their interests and needs of the children. Aside from writing, G. Stanley Hall created a children's institute at Clark's University in 1888. In this institute, Hall collected data on children and formed basis for educational practices. He had a lab and a program for teaching, and he promoted child study. However, the data collected did not match Hall's theory, so there was no more attention on the laboratory data. However, there was more attention added on the educational program Hall had due to teachers and parents. The lasting impact on G. Stanley Hall was that his theories influenced psychologists like John Piaget to develop their own ideas to children's development. Hall's opinions over the growth of adolescence created the idea of separating elementary education and high school, thus the creation of middle school. The idea of separate according to developmental properties, middle school educators proposed to have their own curriculum different from both elementary and high schools. Also, middle schools should have focus on both developmental and educational needs. G. Stanley Hall made the classification of middle schools, which we will see around today, and he also shaped the way American education system is split up in terms of age. And his theory of adolescents not being adult or kids has helped them learn and develop in schools.